coming up on Larson Farms. That is not good. Field fire. Heavy. I am literally shaking right now. Never in my life have I experienced this. I'm ready, but I have no idea what we're doing. I need the Swede. Where's the Swede? We're just all here getting it done. Do you need to seek medical attention? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I might lose my temper. That's a prostate. Uh, you'll find out. <laughs> forward! Forward! That didn't take much. Chet Larson? You never know what we're going to get into, right, Dougal? Ah! You're in the rhubarb! I'm having fun. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's another day of harvest. Uh, today is going to be a little slow start. We are going to go um, unhook a Salford 4200, get that on the 5200. We got to get that set in the field. Um, Brody's cornhead is supposed to be showing up here hopefully this morning or early afternoon. And then we have uh, Sam Paulson showing up today. and. We'll see what he gets us into. But hopefully by the end of the, the day, we have two corn combines in the field giving her. That is my goal. That is the goal of today is to get something harvested. We'll just park this one here, right in front of the other one, just to be an inconvenience for whoever drives that one. Probably Jordan. <laughs> Morning, boys. Morning. Morning. <laughs> no, I don't, should I? What up? You mean the stops in? Oh yeah. The hangers. I'll just set her on the ground. She ain't gonna freeze in. <laughs> oh god. Yet, hopefully. So, we're done with the uh, 4200 for right now. We have 800 acres, I believe. We're up in the air on, on what's going to get hog manure. Some is, a lot is. Um, definitely gonna get some. Yeah, it's time to get hooked up to the 5200. This is for black beans, soybean ground. It is a lot less aggressive. Um, it does really nice job in soybean residue, um, but it's just got these two conclave blades in the front and then the wavy ba blades in the back. So we're gonna be swapping to this machine for corn residue, corn ground, where it is concave blades the whole way through the machine, all the way across. The front two rows are the really aggressive ones um, as you move through the machine, the back ones get a little bit less sharp, so it don't, doesn't leave ridges, obviously. It does a fin fantastic job, but it pulls hard. This is a 25 foot, this is a 36 foot, and the tractor doesn't even know it's behind it. You gotta back up. There you go, pull! I am! Jiggle it! There it is! <laughs> Oh, is our pin a little wore out? Yeah, she's getting a nice notch in it. Oh man, she's she's a little low. I think that this is uh, ready to be field tested. I'm sure it might need some uh, just depth adjustments because I don't remember what we were doing with this one last fall. It hasn't been used yet this year because still paint on it. Well, I assume it was tillage, but of what degree? Was it spoils? Was it frost? I don't know. Mud. mud. It definitely was mud. We know that. We can confirm that it was in the mud. So that probably is, means it was set substantially different than what we we're going to want this year. So because the ground's so hard, we're probably going to want more down weight. Yeah, we need a little rain actually. So I made two eggs today. Oh God. With smoked cheddar cheese, and then I toasted some bread, a whole grain healthy bread, and threw honey on it. It's real good. It's like a honey egg sandwich. It's amazing how they all make these nice breakfasts, especially Jordan. Every morning, yeah. he's just got this gourmet breakfast. It's like, you know, I'm normally showing up to work. 
Wanted hungry. to throw another one of those babies <laughs> down. Usually here every day. <laughs> Beautiful smell. Drying corn. He's got them fired up, trying to get them fine-tuned. So uh, now we are going to go set on some sulfurs in the field, get them set up so they are leveled and at the proper depth. All right. We got Johnny back. It's his first day back from this spring. He's gonna be a truck driver slash tillage guy. And since we're not combining right now, we're gonna get him familiarized, get that thing set. So me and Brody are eyes on the ground. GPS signal has been lost. <laughs> That's not good. It's solar flares? That makes sense. We don't have a globe on the tractor. We'll be back. We will be back. <laughs> Guess it wasn't the solar flares, it's no globe. Wow. <laughs> if we did the first pass down the field, we're going to check and see how deep we're going. We had to put it in the ground. This looks black. Holy cow. We might be too deep. I think so. Yeah, I think we're too deep. It would, would make sense because she's only able to pull it at 6.8 miles an hour. We got moisture down there. I can't believe it. There's actual moisture. Yeah, that's, that's four and a half probably. This is Randy's pass. Definitely not as black. So I'm assuming he's not as deep. I'm not unsatisfied with that though. We gotta, we gotta find a happy medium between too deep and just wasting fuel. Right. And not being able to pull it and keeping it black. Yeah, I can see the wings are trying to ride out of the ground. When you get to the end, let's just stop and do an adjustment. So when you get, get it too deep, when the ground's too hard, the wings wanna ride out of the ground. So we're going to, that's a good indication you're too deep for the conditions we are in. So we're gonna take it out. I'm gonna go a half inch, half inch out. And then we got Jordan, look at him go. <laughs> he looks like the county. Look at him go, wow. We, we got him mowing the field edges, the drowned outs. And then we actually have the county here maintaining the road. Yeah, we were only able to pull it at six. Took it out a half inch, now he's going eight. Looks like it's doing a really nice job, actually. Alrighty. Mm, that smells so good. It does, it smells like dirt. <laughs> yes. It smells like beautiful dirt. Yeah, I think I think this is more than satisfactory. Satisfactory. Look at that guy. He's fill. He's he wave. He's just watching us talk we to better, the camera. We better go fill him too. <laughs> I think we're good. I think that one's pretty dialed in. So this this one needs. It's nose down way too much, which he can adjust hydraulically. Holy cow, Brody, we are gonna have to get combining. They're already catching. <laughs> they, got they got half done already. They're half done and we barely got them set. They're gonna be pulling in the tail of it when we're getting done or in the field. I love I love this tool. I truly yeah. love the 5200. It is an animal. It's just so fast and it's mesmerizing to watch the churning effect that happens underneath that machine. So we got Rylan, it's Randy's son. He's been running the 4200 all season. Um, and then we got Johnny. Both, I don't think have done much fall tillage ever. Getting them trained, taking the time to train them in so that everyone knows how, to, how the machine works and how we want it to look and how we want it to be ran. I have no doubt that they, they'll do a good job, but just, it's always best to educate. Hell yeah. <laughs> well guys, just like that, it is the next day. Yesterday, 
Um, ended up being a lot more set up and messing around than we expected. Brody is still working on setting up his corn head. I am out giving her. I did this much last night. What is it? About 90 acres I did last night. And uh, yeah, so I was, I didn't get to combine much or didn't get out till basically dark last night because we were installing or we had kibble equipment come out and install the Gen 5s in both of our combines, uh, which went pretty decent. It just took time as there really was no hiccups, um, but they had to install the, what's this called? Extended monitor and the arm wrist monitor, the main one. So this is the G5 uh, upgrade kit for, um, I believe, any Gen 4? I'm not sure. Don't quote me. If you want more information, contact your dealer. But anyways, we uh, traded in our, our Gen 4s and got Gen 5s. These are uh, a lot wider. Of course. These are a lot wider uh, before the screen ended right here. So I have another column I can have. I have yet to set up my screens completely. Um, I was able to save my screens, but now I, I can add more stuff to look at. So then I can run less run pages and see more on each screen, which I like. And the color is absolutely amazing. But with crappy yields, means more acres per day, which I mean, I'd, I would rather combine 200 plus bushel corn and drive slower because that pays the bills a lot better. But Here's, here's a number that I look at more than really anything, and I mean, you gotta keep into consideration. I know that this machine performs very well at 4,000 to 4,300 bushel per hour. So I look, uh, I look at this number right here, and basically that will tell me how fast I should be driving. So this corn is, you know, we're getting closer to 200, uh, 180, so I gotta slow down. Uh, keep that number around 4,000, 4,200, 4,300. It's going to perform very well and not blow it out the hind end. You start getting up 4,600, you better be watching yourself because uh, that just seems to be kind of for the settings I am running without getting cops in the tank and really opening stuff up. Um, that's that's the number I look at. So then you get into the 140 bushel corn, you can crank ground speed up, try to keep the trucks moving, grain carts moving. Well, we're only running one right now, but it's going to be, it's a lot of hydro handle moving out here because it's burying something severe. So here's the, here's the yield map. You can see this area for whatever reason, really good. That's 200, 220. All of this is uh, not so good. So once you get comfortable with the field, you kind of know where you need to be speeding up and slowing down also. And just like that, I have help. Wow, the big Swedes in the green 2596 and 600 number one. We got Brody out here. He's got uh, gearing off riding with him, fine tuning, making sure everything's working and talking. So far, he hasn't stopped, so thinking it's gonna be a green light. Thank goodness, too, because I just hit the mile long rounds, and that's always kind of sucks to do with one combine. That is not good. Field fire. Do you have any corn harvested on that west side? We're all on the phone together. Big, big fire in the neighbor's cornfield. Well, I have been called off of the farm because of reports of smoke and a fire in a field that is close to one of our unharvested cornfields. I believe we were combining up in the area um, and I believe they pulled out of the field to go to the field that looks to be in uh, jeopardy. Stay tuned. This is going to be a new one. Never seen nothing like this before. Just what you want to have happen when you're in hot pursuit of a fire or on a fire call. Get stuck behind the local farmers. You know these farmers? They just all over the road. And it's a grain cart, I think. Can't really tell. I think it's a grain cart. It's one of our grain carts. 
beep, beep, beep. Come on, get out of the way. I am literally shaking right now. We're both, both filled up and we have to go combine the neighbor's field. Fire trucks all over. Okay, we have found that it uh, must have come from the combine or something, the neighbor's combine, and we are trying to get get the uh, headlands off the neighbors. I've called the other neighbor where the fire is heading to, and we are going to tear take his headlands off, hoping that the uh, the uh, wind does not pick up. I have never seen nothing like this. I just cannot believe it. Stay tuned. We brought our Salford over to uh, go out into the standing corn and circle it. I just can't believe it. What a shame. But what else you gonna do when it gets down to this? Eric is running to Salford right now. I hate to get too far out into this. Never know what happens. It's gonna be darn hard to put this out in this corn stocks, I know that. We are currently trying to stop a wildfire. I'm shaking right now. I'm in the neighbor's corn. That field started on fire and it's jumped the fence line. Salford in action. You are gonna get on that damn road behind you and get that cart to the west end. I'm sure the local fire department appreciate me walking around holding this thing, but some things need to be shown. How important it is to, I don't know, can hardly stop harvest just because it's dry out, but man, how bad it can go. It's unbelievable. I have never seen, I have never seen the corn stalk actually burn. I've drove by a few fields that I've seen fire go through where the stock is standing with a little bit of corn on it yet, but uh, I've never actually watched it just burn. I'm going back to my pickup. It is getting pretty black, so I think as long as the wind doesn't get going and stupid, I think we got it. As long as the wind stays stays uh, decent, just like that, there's a big gust. We're currently in the neighbor's field taking off some headlands so we can do some tillage here and hopefully contain this thing. All right, the fire department is here. Uh, they've got trucks all over. Multiple fire departments are here. Uh, this field is the one that was burning. It was going this direction. Uh, it looks like Eric got in there, made a nice trail for the fire department to get to. Uh, this neighbor, he showed up with trucks. We just peeled off 24 rows. Eric is gonna try to blacken that pass. 
I think it's under control, but you know with fires, all it takes is one leaf to relight and so we're gonna try to make as many black paths as possible out here. Wow, talk about wild. Never in my life have I experienced this. <sighs> Just gotta see stuff to believe it. I'm gonna have to get a t-shirt now. Gotta see it to believe it. Thank the Lord it was easily controlled with some crop loss, I guess, but could have been a whole lot, whole lot worse. We're gonna take off the, we called a neighbor, I think I said that, my mind is a little bit, uh, you know, kerfuffled. But we're gonna take off the headlands off the neighbors, he's got his trucks down here, and then we are going to take Salford, do his headlands, so that if this thing does fire back up, fire department or whoever has somewhat of a chance at putting it out and also the field that was on fire we're going to let the guy that was harvesting do his side and then we're going to run to Salford on that so that like I say if something does fire back up we got some black streaks to survive on I'm out well this is kind of a kind of brought everybody to a little meeting of the minds. What are you doing? <laughs> Is he on fire? Not yet. Well, let's go get the corn onto the neighbor's truck. Well, that was chaotic. I don't know what kind of filming I got for you guys. The combines are unloading. They cut through the northwest quarter of this section, the southeast quarter is what started on fire. Don't know exactly how yet. And then a southeast wind was pushing it through all of, all three quarters of standing ground. So yes, our combines just took off the neighbor's headlands. I'm gonna block in that just in case yeah, I would think they anything could be starts here again. In the field. And then uh, try not to get more than two semi-loads, yes, or what? That was, well, that was an experience. All right, double passing it. This, uh, this is going to be our fire, firewall, fire break. This, this is a bad day for everyone. This, this whole section of farmers just had the fear of God in them, had lost the crop. Two had lost a crop. Downtime, firefighters out here, a lot of them are volunteering in the area. Takes them away from their job, and I am not blaming anyone. It's just as dry as we are, it does not take much. You just sit and think about the lives that that just impacted. Fortunately, it was only corn, only grain, no equipment got caught up in this mess. Uh, nobody got caught up in this mess. It did not get crazy out of control. We had a lack of wind today. It could have been a lot worse. So we thank God for that. We got some corn. That must be your tip for saving the day. I think I'll uh, bring that back to the people that <laughs> lost them. Well, that is literally the most adrenaline rush that you will ever experience. That was, that was pure panic. That's a shame, that is a shame. They don't know how it started if the, the corn had, it is so dry today. Um, it is terribly dry, a light breeze. Luckily it ain't that terrible wind. Started behind the combine. Maybe the rock hit the chopper knife or a spark off the machine. Turned, grain cart came back and like, well, field's on fire. It's crazy how stuff, freak things like that could happen. Wow. That's exciting.
That is a 138,000 pound load. Don't turn too quick with her. Unreal. <laughs> well guys, I think that's gonna be a wrap on this video. You'll see in the morning how full those carts are. 138,000 pounds on both of them. I don't know, man. I don't think I've ever had them that full. Normally I think they're full at 132,000, so I don't know if it's good test weight or the right moisture that you can really bridge it up. That's impressive. Well, that was an exciting video, exciting day. Uh -huh. Thanks for watching. I hope you subscribe and come back next time because we never know. When you click on a Larson Farms video, you never know what could happen. Could be blown engines, could be uh, cornfield fires. I've never experienced that before, but you just never know because I never know. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Next up on Larson Farms. <laughs> I need help. What, Brody? It's like a contradicting thing. You want to get as much done per day as possible, but yet you want high yields, which then you don't get as much done. Well, it was all going good until it wasn't. Do you allow hitchhikers? I suppose. <laughs>